As some of you may know, um, I was the copyright administrator on the Otter project, which was um, making our teaching resources open access. And um, so my job was to check that um, the materials, if they contain third party external material, um, that, that they were copyright compliant, legally compliant. Um, so that's why I, I've been asked to um, come here and put forward what I perceive to be the benefits of copyright today. Um, Sam and I had many, many discussions about this during my time with the Otter Project. And um, we, we come from opposing sides, but I, I, I think we can meet somewhere in the middle. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, Chris. Um, <laughs> That's really a picture of me pulling my hair out um, because copyright was um, a teeny tiny problem um, in the, in doing the OERs. Um, you know, it was a full time job um, for the duration of the project, but some parts of it were easier than the others. Um, so, ooh, won't let me move my slides on. Aha, right, thank you. Uh, right, so the benefits of copyright. Okay, well, um, I suppose what I ought to say before I go down this route is that I'm not ardently in favour of the UK copyright regime in its current form. But I do think that there are some good points to it. Um, I am the copyright administrator for the university and I have been for the last uh, three and a half years, so I've got to think that there are some good points on it. Um, so essentially, you know, the law grants the authors moral rights and these are really to, to protect them. Um, they are the rights to be known and acknowledged as the author and the right for their work not to be subjected to derogatory treatment. And, um, you know, I, I, I think both of those are very important, especially for new authors um, or new artists, because they need to get recognition, they need to get their name out there. Um, the law also allows for licensing and collecting agencies to be set up. And if I'm honest, that does make my life a lot easier. I spend a lot of my time working under um, the Copyright Licensing Agency. Um, they have a blanket license for universities, uh, which allow us to um, photocopy, make multiple copies, and scan uh, a wide range of materials. And um, you know, I, I keep my fingers crossed that a lot of the requests I get are covered by these licenses. Um, and there's numerous other ones for uh, newspaper licensing, um, edu educational recording and that kind of thing. Um, I also live in hope that copyright helps minimise plagiarism. If, you know, as a moral right, authors have to be acknowledged, um, then I think it, it, you know, it would help minimise people reproducing the content and claiming it as their own. And I also think that it does help get new ideas and theories into the public realm um, because publishers are, are happier to use content if they can get an author to sign a licensing agreement to say, this is my own work. Um, and once it's published, I think it can encourage healthy debate between authors. Um, and as the IPO says, copyright helps discourage people from exploiting others' work and, more importantly, allows them to take legal redress. Nobody wants their work to be reused in a way in which they don't agree with or to be taken out of context. And I also do think it encourages creativity. If people know that they are going to be associated with creating something, whether it be music or whether it be you know, literature or a work of art, a photograph, then they are more likely to want to release it into the public realm. So that's, as I see, the benefit of copyright. However, as I said, I'm not 
particularly keen, I think, at the moment the UK regime is somewhat restrictive. So, Richard, if you could move on to my next slide, um, I'll just go through the, the current drawbacks, I think, of copyright. Um, so, I mean, this is what I came across um, to some extent within the Otter project. You can approach an author to use their work and they'll say, yes, that's absolutely fine. However, you need to check with the publisher. But um, a lot of the publishers restrict the reuse by others. You know, m none of the major publishers that we approach to reuse their content would allow us to do so, even if we offered to pay a fee or we asked to, we, we promised to attribute their work, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and to some extent, it can restrict the reuse by the um, authors themselves. I get a number of questions um, in my kind of day-to-day -day work as to, well, what can I do with, with, with my work? And I always say, well, check your contract that you signed, um, which, of course, a lot of people don't really take much notice of it. They just want their work published. Um, and the other thing is that publishers can charge very large prices for reuse. Um, or, as I've said, not allow it at all. Uh, the other point is, and I'm sure you know, Sam will probably touch on this, because um, I know he's keen for kind of people to, to opt in to copyright. Um, but we have the problem at the moment of orphan works. So where we don't know who the creator is or who the, the rights holder is, it's extremely difficult to try and track down um, you know, who to get permission from, do we need permission, is the author dead, are, are they out of copyright? Um, so orphan works is a matter of risk, with certain things you've got to be brave and just kind of jump in with both feet, but um, the kind of the law as it is at the moment to require, you know, makes a lot of us very risk averse. Um, as I've said, copyright can be very time consuming. We're constantly trying to work within the, um, the, the multitude of different licenses that there are within the UK for different types of material. Um, if we could have a blanket license that covered everything, then that would be great. Um, I do certainly think it, it stops people from making their materials creative Commons, especially if they've used parts of other people's work, um, mainly because they can't get permission for it. Um, the duration of copyright law at the moment is um, certainly for um, uh, written works is 70 years from the death of the author. Um, so again, you know, people, I, I get a number of emails saying this must be out of copyright. Well, it, it, in most cases, unfortunately, it isn't. Um, and I think my main criticism of UK law at the moment is that it hasn't caught up with uh, the digital advance, uh, advances that have been made. Um, I work within Documents Pry in, in, in the library, and we can't accept uh, requests for, to make photocopies um, without a physical signature of the person. So they can't just type their name and email the request in, um, and we can't scan and email out copies of things to people um, because there's digital there's digital rights. Um, it's certainly the, the copies we get um, electronically are only from the British Library and they have digital rights management um, things associated with them. Um, and I suppose my final point, and this was very, very clear uh, during my time with Otter, is that um, copyright law still isn't understood by publishers, um, you know, I would have to explain it, uh, what we wanted to do um, and why we were asking their permission on numerous, numerous occasions. And I still have to do that in my job today um, when it's a, a relatively straightforward request. So, you know, I, I do think copyright has its benefits, um, but as I said, is it fit for purpose at the moment? Probably not. It probably needs some amending. So now I think I'll um, stop talking and, uh, and let Sam take over.